when we're first introduced to short moments and a balanced view, it's really, really, really key to continue recognizing, sharing, and documenting the shifts that unfold naturally because that empowers the footing and confidence to continue relying on short moments, to continue relying on the empowerment and support of the Four Mainstays in which the trainer's totally there for you to continue to ground uh, in open intelligence, the instinctive recognition of open intelligence, and empower the strengths, gifts, and talents that are innate to, to each of us. And also, you know, all of the resources on the website, everything is there to continue grounding the obviousness of open intelligence in our instinctive recognition and realization and and continue opening the the value of a life that's aligned with reality, I mean, simply aligned with reality. And what's so key also is this is not a destination orientation practice. Short Moments confirms our already powerful, beneficial, spontaneously responsive nature that is not contrived or an add-on. We're not developing something. We're confirming human nature the way it already is. We're confirming our power to be of benefit moment by moment. And this was such a, a gift to hear that it's right here, right now. The power to know, the power to see whether your eyes are opened or closed in a very stable, wide open, unalterable way is always on. And so, you know, we hear the introduction uh, many times, and it's, it's so valuable to hear, to, to again, ground in the obviousness of reality. When we make the suggestion, you know, just stop thinking for a moment. The, the obvious power to know, the alert clarity is unalterable, whether you're thinking or not thinking. Now, the purpose of that is not to stop thinking over and over and over again. The key to that instruction is the inseparability of the view, open intelligence, and the dynamic display of energy, moment by moment, whatever that dynamic display of energy is. And so this inseparability is the also the obviousness of the self-release of every single data stream, every single experience, self-release is leaving no trace. We could not try to hold on to anything. We couldn't actually really avoid the self-release, and we actually can't change the self-release because it's instantaneous. In the moment of perception, the self-release is simultaneous. So this is like the analogy of a breeze in air, where the breeze spontaneously is apparent, self-resolves, leaving no trace, and it's not separate from the sky. It's not separate whatsoever. So we can really look into this in our own direct experience. Let's say the, the breeze of procrastination is, is apparent as a description. We couldn't possibly hold on to that storyline and keep it. We couldn't tattoo ourselves with that and say, that's who I am. If we said, I'm a procrastinator, 
it's self-release and leaves no trace. There's nothing that can hold open intelligence to a description. Open intelligence is always the context of the power to know every description, and that is what has gone unrecognized. So it's really, really crucial in a short moment to acknowledge open intelligence inseparable from that dynamic display, like the color blue in the sky. Sky-like open intelligence, shade of blue, of dynamic energy that is shimmering and shifting while the sky remains open and clear. And what we were trained in, in a reified intelligence, in an intelligence that's closed and has the belief system that we're self-generated and separate from one another, that's a reified intelligence, is that we uh, were immersed in and familiarized with the emphasis on one aspect of our intelligence, the dynamic energy. And so when, when that was trained up, then we didn't notice the stable context of open intelligence, even though it's always the view, it's always the power to perceive, it's always the power to know. We can never turn it on or off. You can try, but you'll notice you could never turn off the power to perceive. And, and so once we acknowledge this, then it's easier to acknowledge it again and again in a short moment. And so we've all, to some degree or another, uh, been so immersed in the culture of any kind of addiction that is a tendency to indulge, avoid, or replace. And it was helpful, helpful to hear that, wow, the education in reified intelligence is an addiction. And it's the greatest addiction that's gone unrecognized. There's a lot of focus on a lot of addictions, you know, alcohol, um, uh, drugs, uh, workaholic, smoking, sex, uh, TV, uh, you know, I could go on and on, shopping. And, 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 and all of these are tactics for trying to find some kind of relief you know, some kind of relief. But it's so clear when we have a, a conversation about this, actually not just a conversation, but when we ground it and opening up the topic to the very essence of every single one of these topics, what we find is the power to know. We find open intelligence is always on. And so this is the comfort and relief and stability that was being sought after in trying to... Uh, uh, hold to a certain experience to try to find well-being or happiness. But just like the flight path of the bird, it's going to vanish, leaving no trace. And so then the addiction becomes more and more uh, ramped up because there's a constant trying to attempt to hold on to or get some kind of experience. And so this is exhausting. It's totally exhausting. And to try to think that we're someone separate, all alone, trying to do this, you know, that alone is a, a, a made-up story that, again, we believed. That doesn't make, mean it's accurate. So here we have this instruction of short moments, whenever you remember, the obviousness of open intelligence and its dynamic display are inseparable. And the responsiveness that arises amidst the inseparability, the, the recognition of inseparability, is always beneficent. Always beneficent in a way that's a comprehensive, beneficial responsiveness. Not a me, 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 or a you, you, you or a, a certain we, we, we kind of benefit. It's all-pervasive benefit because that's the nature of open intelligence. It's already all-pervasive like the sky. So it doesn't sort 
certain shades of blue or certain experiences into positive, negative, or neutral. That's something human beings who have been ad addicted to reified intelligence have taken up. So as there's an end to buy-in to reified intelligence, what else also settles out is the, the mechanistic descriptions of positive, negative, and neutral. And we open to our spontaneous beneficial responsiveness for all. And, and it, it's, it's very common that this logical um, uh, analogy of um, that we've seen in science, like with singularity, is then grounded in our instinctive recognition. And so this is the key aspect where it's not just an idea or a concept, but whoa, it's like, wow, here's this behavior that I'm, let's say, avoiding uh, a certain person. And what's apparent is open intelligence amidst that thought. Complete relaxation, complete relaxation. That thought slips away, leaving no trace another thought pops in. Oh, I'm thirsty. This slips away, leaving no trace. The key is relying on openness for discernment in our responsiveness that is effortless and natural. So initially, when we come out of denial of the addiction to reified intelligence, we're saying, hey, I participated in that way of behavior. I participated in attempting to avoid, replace, and indulge experiences to try to feel good. And it never worked. It never worked for any kind of long-term, stable well-being. It was always a roller coaster of good and of, let's say, positive and negative throughout life. And trying to get rid of the negative and hold to the positive. And so when we see this is what we've participated in, and then we say, oh wow there's another choice, there's another option, then we can take a short moment and rely on open intelligence amidst the same or the similar experience. Now that indivisibility of open intelligence amidst that similar circumstance is the empowerment to recognize a new and different responsiveness that is upholding everyone and everything. Whereas before, it was a limited view where we were still trying to scamper around and rely on the next data stream. But now, it's again and again relying on our stable, open view. And I really appreciate the analogy of the potter's wheel because Let's say we've been pumping, pumping, pumping the potter's wheel of reification for two decades. That's, that's a very short amount of time in the grand scheme of, of things, right? But that's what we were familiar with. And then in one short moment, the foot comes off the wheel. And the obviousness of open intelligence and, and data is, is totally clear. That wheel starts to slow down even though it's still spinning a little. We're not investing in indulging, replacing, attempting to indulge, replace, or avoid any circumstance or experience, people, places, or things. But having really open to looking into where, where have we invested the most energy in avoiding, replacing, and indulging, then it's easier to make the choice to rely on open intelligence because we say, wow, okay, with this relationship with my parent, that's where I've had the most challenging um, circumstance. So now that's my biggest cue to rely on open intelligence no matter what, allow the data to flow on by, and allow a new and fresh responsiveness every time, every single moment. So we're not trying to hold to a solution from the past or an idea of how it'll look in the future. It's a solution that's fresh in this moment, right now. Totally fresh, relying on complete openness. 
are, it's like the uh, honoring of our innate beneficial qualities and activities. And that specific response is unleashed in a totally natural, natural way. And then we begun to realize that, wow, my intelligence is equal to everyone's intelligence, that to nature, all animals, all people, places, and things, wow, we're all pervaded by the same exact intelligence, equally inclusive and pervaded by, wow, in every short moment, it starts to dawn. And, and so it's easier and easier to rely on a short moment because our capacity for heartfelt beneficial responsiveness is, is always been natural to us. And, and when we're honoring the truth of who we are, it's delightful. And it's easier to, to remember, it's easier to rely on to make the choice because it's so miserable to attempt to avoid, indulge, or replace an experience that's already self-released. And, and so there's this sense of compassion that dawns. And it could be like tears, tears of sadness for how we've treated ourselves and others, simultaneous to laughter for having duped ourselves with a, a story that was made up and untrue. And this opens up into more and more confidence. And, 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 then, and really being willing to accept the support of friends who simply have more experience, like trainers or other friends around the world that are relying on the four mainstays of open intelligence the resources that reestablish and honor our human nature. And so here we are, a global community that's pioneering an education that's grounded in reality and that is uh, flourishing due to the use of the tools of this current era, like technology, so that we can share the, the resources and the solutions that can be immediately implemented any, in any circumstance, a short moment, right here, right now, open intelligence and the current data stream, exactly as it is. The data self-releases, leaving no trace, open intelligence, wide open and clear, unalterable, indestructible. And more and more, we recognize that this is our true identity. And there's nothing else that needs to be done. We don't have to search for better qualities, our activities in the future, or self-improvement projects. It's always the indivisibility of open intelligence and data in every here and now, keeping it that simple and enjoying the adventure of the creativity of uh, a solution-oriented life that's of benefit for all. <laughs>